The spirit that comes upon Jesus at his baptism sustains him when he is tested by Satan so that he might proclaim the good news of God's reign. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angel waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This week I want to talk about what it means to be tested and how a test can influence our lives. To quote an author I don't have the name to give credit to from many years ago, without a test, there can be no testimony. Okay, that's your key phrase today. Pay attention. Without a test, there can be no A seeker after truth approaches a saint for guidance. Tell me, wise one, how do you become holy? Two words. And what are they, please? Right choices. The seeker was fascinated. How does one learn to choose rightly? One word. One word. May I have it, please? The seeker asked. Growth. Oh, the seeker was thrilled. How how does one grow? Two words. Please, pray tell, what are the two words? Wrong choices. Hmm. Anyone else ever made a wrong choice? Just me? Okay. Wrong choices, I like to say to people, build character. You know, that thing you hope is truly building in you when you can't make anything else good out of what you did or experienced except to hope it really does build character. But we humans make bad choices like clockwork. Mark's gospel, speaking of clockwork, is our clockwork gospel. Remember, I talked about it a few weeks ago, and I started snapping my fingers as if it was a second hand. Things are constantly happening. It's on a pace. There's a cadence. It is clockwork inspired. It is interspersed with the word immediately immediately, so that we know that we're on a schedule. We have places to go, things to do. So let's get through this story. Mark makes choices about what to include and what not to include. It's why we get quick hitting series of events, as in today's reading, short, pithy, but full of information. This is the third time we have this reading since the beginning of the year this reading or some version thereof. Once again, we hear about Jesus' baptism, and we also hear about the Spirit, which we hear about no fewer than 23 times in the Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit, which is at work descending on Jesus at his baptism and then driving him out into the wilderness. And it's not just driving him out. The original language for this word for driving out is a word that really means something forcible, like casting out or throwing out. So the Spirit is forcibly pushing Jesus out into the wilderness. And the wilderness was, in the early days of faith, a place to go to pray, to meditate, to seek answers, to discern, to listen for God's voice. I think that the tempting and testing that Jesus undergoes is like this. 
In Genesis, God tests Abraham in his faithfulness by asking him to sacrifice his son before relenting. In Exodus, God rains down bread upon the people, bread which was called, anybody remember? Manna. But then he challenges the Israelites to only take as much as they need for that day, a test of their faithfulness. In Deuteronomy, we read, For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you indeed love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. In Matthew and Luke's version of the wilderness story of Jesus, Jesus uses these words from Deuteronomy to rebuke the devil. So the test that Jesus faces may not be about seeking to cause Jesus to fail, but about helping Jesus to grow, to show that God has faith in Jesus, that in difficult times, Jesus' character will be revealed. There's that character word again. Jesus makes the right choices. We, we presume Mark doesn't give us all the details as the other Gospels do, because the next thing we hear about is Jesus going to Galilee and G John being arrested. It seems like each time there is a test in Scripture, there is a testimony, right? A witness to the love of God that follows. We heard it in the first reading. In spite of the destruction and the flood, ultimately God makes a covenant with God's people. Have we been tested at all lately? Who's gone to a doctor lately? What do you get at doctor's offices? Right? Tests or appointments for more tests, right? But we've also, also been tested in ways that we may never fully be able to articulate. Screenwriter Robert McKee says, true character is revealed in the choices a human being makes under pressure. The greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation, the truer the choice the character's essential nature. Have we experienced pressure in our lives? Have you felt any stress lately? Of course you have. Of course we all have. I can't imagine the challenges that some of you face in everyday life. Let's think about government officials these days. Anybody inspired to work in the government? Anybody want to be a judge? How about the care facilities that I visit regularly? They're shorthanded as staff and doing the best that they can. How about teachers? Anybody work in the education system and feel like, oh, we've got plenty of teachers, lots of help, no problems? Yeah? Incredible pressure. Incredible testing of people's capacities. But I also know that I have witnessed remarkable responses by people. I believe that we witness the revealing of character forged through adversity each day. Pastor, writer, and theologian Brian Stoffergen said, I believe that this is God's purpose in times of testing, to help us grow, to show us that we have the faith and the ability to stand up to the testing that we will trust God in difficult times to strengthen our faith, our faith and our Christian character. So how will the tests that we face result in our testimony? Without the test, there can be no... Oh, not everybody was with me that time. Without a test, there can be no testimony, yes. So what will your witness be? What will your testimony be about who God is? About how God has been with you in the stress, the pressure, and the testing through your own experience? How will what you've experienced serve the kingdom of God? How will what you've experienced help someone else? 
and the revealing of your character. Have you thought about what you would say if someone asked you, what's your experience with this whole God thing? I think as Lutherans, we fall back really quickly on the verses that talk about trusting that the Holy Spirit will give us the words in the moment and then pray that the moment never happens. But there is a gift in what you've experienced. Each one of you. That's why I talk about the Holy Spirit gathering us together and how each of you is so unique and what a beautiful gift it is to have everyone here. Because each of you have had a different experience in life. Each of you have faced different testing, different pressures, different stresses in your lives. But they've made you stronger in your faith, I dare say. So how would you respond if someone said to you, Why do you go to church? Why does this faith thing matter? Why does it matter to be together with other people in a community of faith? How have you been made stronger by leaning on God through the difficult times in life? These are the things we need to think about. It informs our testimony, right? Because without a test, there is no. How is God calling you to be a witness? How is God building your character? What are you being prepared for? Boy, that was a tricky question they asked me during the candidacy process to go to seminary. I think we all can think about that question. God has been with you from the very beginning. God will be with you through all of your experiences, through all of your testing, through all of the pressure, through all of the stress, through all the unknowns, the surgeries, the medical procedures, the treatments. God is with you. The tests that we've faced have made us stronger have defined our Christian character, have empowered our testimony to the love of God for us. Because God loves you so much. We just have to remember that without a test, there is no... Right? So you just passed your first test. Congratulations. And may God give you what you need when you need it, the strength you need, the people around you, the Holy Spirit touching you, pushing you, pressing you, reminding you of God's great love for you. May we all experience that kind of love. Thanks be to God. Amen.